Hey guys, so it's been a while since I've done a video and I thought it was about time I kicked my butt into gear so to speak. I took a step back for a little while and I've just been working on projects that I've been enjoying like doing a lot of 3D printing and different bits and pieces. But I thought it's about time I did a video and one of the easiest ways to get back into the swing of things is to do a post bag. And I've been collecting a lot of posts as you can tell. Um, we're not going to go through the whole box today. But I just thought I'd do a sample of some of the things that's come in, some more special than others. So let's get to it. I've opened all the packages already just so I know what's in them so I could pick out the best ones. Um, he says and then opens a black square. For ages now I've been just soldering and kind of holding my breath technique which is not ideal. But I haven't been doing that much really. But I'm just thinking as I'm starting to solder more and more boards up, it probably makes sense to knock something together. So I bought one of these active charcoal filters. And there's a few designs on Thingiverse, so I'm going to look at using those. There was one that used three of these, so I'm going to look at doing that. And the idea is just to pair it up with a 80mm or ideally a 120mm fan, just to make, as an extractor. The next one is, ah, yeah. These are a whole bunch of right angle. Connectors, which go on the reflow board. Originally, I did have it just with vertical mounted ones, but I've actually went with the right angle ones, similar to what Sion did with his reflow master. And I realized why he did that now after I started using mine. It just makes sense with the the aesthetics and how you use it and just where you can apply the pressure on the 3D uh, design stand and that's what I struggled with a little bit. Another one is this was a fantastic deal lately that was on AliExpress and I hope everyone managed to get one of these. And this is a TT Go board. That was sealed, that's why it wouldn't push out. So yeah, this is a small board from TT Go has USB-C so it's one of the first boards I've got that has a USB-C connector light board connector on the bottom and it also has this funky screen um, and if I can find my USB-C connector if I put this my print supply and I actually I was really surprised by the quality so I get in there should put all USB-C down and maybe it's hard to convey on the camera, but the quality is absolutely uh, fantastic. This little screen got a few ideas of projects coming up, so I'll post those on the channels. But but yeah, it's an amazing board for what you for your pay. Full ASP32 screen built in, um, light board charger built in, and they even give you the tails for the cable as well. Um, Interestingly, unless I dropped it, that was only one one connector there. <laughs> I'm sorry, one header. I don't know why that is. But yeah, it was amazing for 82 pence delivered. And it is one of the fastest deliveries I've had ever from China. It took like a week if less than that, maybe. So it was amazing. Okay, the next thing I have is a... If I bring that up. Yep. We can get some light and things. So that is a um, LED driver, and it's from 300 milliamps to 3 amps. I've used these boards before, and they are these great little boards where you. Um, I need some more light on here. Um, maybe that's better. Um, yeah, and what you have is they have these jumpers at the bottom. It's kind of like the old school PC type jumpers. You can feed in a pretty wide range of voltage and then it'll just current limit that voltage that you put in. So it's designed really for something like one of these panels. Um, and this is a 70 watt Cobb LED um, that runs at 12 volts. And the idea is that you can feed this in. It also has an enable pin. So if you want to control it with an Arduino or a ESP, something like that, you could, could do that. Now I started doing that and the idea was to make a really fancy light which is what I'm using at the moment I can show that in a future video um, with a 3D printed housing and everything but then I realised that I kind of com went complete overkill with what was required 
Yeah, these aren't cheap, but they are very, very good boards, and you know you're not going to burn your panel out. Um, what I end up using was one of these. And this is a small LED controller. It says peak current 12 amp. I'm not sure I'd want to put 12 amp through these wires, but you can feed in between 5 and 24 volts. You've got your input there, output straight to the LED panel, and the beauty is it comes with an RF remote. And that allows you to then control the brightness on that. And I've got to say for something like a pound 50 or whatever this was, it's great. It just works. Um, and that's what I'm using at the moment. I can automate it. I've got one of the Sonoff RF bridges, but I just haven't feel the, felt the need so far and just been using that come in. If I'm going to do some work, just power it on. Actually, it's here. So you can go 25% light, 50% light. 100% light and off on and you can do the brightness individually it's got modes and speeds but I don't want to have an epileptic fit so I'm not going to play with those um, or cause any of you guys to have a fit but it doesn't go in there it goes in there so as good as these are I'm not actually sure I'd recommend it Which is a big shame because I'm a fool and I bought a few and there's these smaller 10 watt one and um, for 10 watt LEDs and um, I must confess I actually only ordered a couple and for some reason they sent me all these so they're not going to waste but maybe it's not be used for the projects that I thought about okay next we have uh, this is some of the um, the Max um, 31855 breakout boards. I used this in the reflow board that I did. I have bought some new ones just to have a spares and there was a friend I was going to send the reflow to so that's why I had bought them but I don't think that's going to happen now but it's always good to have spares. N never do any harm. Um, maybe I'll make another reflow board, I don't know. This is a bimetallic switch. Of sorts. I saw a video that Andreas Spees did on the bench power supply I have and one of the issues is it's got a noisy fan and he recommended and he did an excellent video which I'll link down below of installing one of these and it just basically means the fan will turn on when it gets above a certain temperature which is the way it should have been from from the start and this was ridiculously cheap like 40 cents or something or maybe slightly more but yeah really really cheap for any of the power wall people out there this was an interesting one that I've seen a lot of people talk about and it's meant to be an active battery balancer. So I'll get some light on this subject. You know, I thought this big powerful light above would have been a good solution, but I'm actually not so sure now. That's better, especially when I need to zoom in. So yeah, so the idea is that this is a 7S active balancer. So the idea being that rather than burn off the power that's excess as we do in the DIY BMS, it will transfer the power from the, an adjacent cell. Um, I'm not sure if that's literally the adjacent cell next to it or whether it can go from say two to five or something like that. But this was extremely cheap and it comes with the tail leads as well. I must confess, I was thinking that this was maybe something that we could have taken and then designed some extra protection and circuitry around it. Because when you say BMS, it, this basically will do the balancing. So it's a battery balancing board. It's not going to do a low voltage cutoff. It's not going to do a high voltage cutoff for the whole pack. You should really be measuring the individual cell voltages. Um, for all this should be balancing, it is still potentially possible if a cell fails or something like that for one of the modules to get way out of uh, spec. And if it, that happens, what you want to do is you want to be able to cut the whole pack off. And so it would have been nice to have used this as a base and then add on to it. But for the life of me, I can't figure out what the active chip is that's used here. It's a small 8-pin uh, chip, um, surface mount, and I it's got like a conformal coating on. I've scratched it, and I can basically only see four digits, which I'll put on the screen as an overlay. I'll have to look again, I can't remember what they are. 
but yeah, it's um, something I'm going to test with my pack. It's interesting. The DIY BMS is kind of working, but as soon as I do my inverter for an extended period of time, it craps out. So I do plan to go to version 4, but that's something to test as well. And lastly, one of the big purchases I got recently was the Tiny Pico 2 pack from Unexpected Maker. Which I know a couple of people had issues from FedEx, only a couple, but FedEx were brilliant with me, excellent communication, box was really well packed. I know Sion didn't mention it could have had bubble wrap around this one, but it was packed really well. cn has got his little 3D printed antenna, I'd say holder, but protection there. And as others have said, this is super tiny. <laughs> I don't have anything planned for it at the moment. I more did this to support Sion because he's a great guy. I do appreciate what he's doing. And I've got to say that the packaging is really top notch. You know, you get a card with the the pin out, nicely color coded. And even the quality of the, the printing and everything, it, it, it's fantastic. You know, silica gel in there. I didn't actually expect to get a proto shield. So that is extremely nice and makes life a little bit easier. It's going to be interesting soldering these on. I think this one should be fine. Mm. Uh, these, I presume, I, I must have missed, I have followed all Sion's journey, just about, but I presume he's put these in just to give us an option, which is obviously the same in the respect of the stackable pins or just the regular header pins. So I've got to say, it, it, it's pretty fantastic and you know it, it's nice to see something from design and the whole process how it's went through it's great to see and he's done a fantastic job i can only aspire to <laughs> ever get close to that but you know maybe just pull my finger out and do some more designs first but yeah so that's fantastic and it's going to be to find the right project you know the good criteria this is extremely low power and um, yeah it's going to kick it into gear when you're using the wi-fi but when you're not using the wi-fi you can switch things off like LEDs and such like. So something low powered, something that needs to be small. So, you know, it'd be great to hear what you guys are using your boards for because I know there's probably a lot of people that follow me have follow Sion as well and have done that. So that is it really. There's a couple of things there that, but yeah, I'll be coming back to do some projects and videos on things like the day by BMS version 4. I'm working on a new version of my... RS-485 to Wi-Fi from the solar charge controller. I'm working on a few other things, electric skateboard at the moment of all things. Doing up a Anet printer that's almost a Prusa now by the amount I've changed it. So I'll be featuring those in the channel, hopefully get back and maybe just do the odd little video here and there. Just watching, feel free to subscribe and like and uh, thanks guys.